I was talking to somebody about the podcast and they were saying, oh yeah, you, you really uh, go at it with Gourley. And yeah. I said, well, I guess there's some passive aggression there. And he mm -hmm. said, well, I'm picking up on the aggression, but not no passivity. No, no, <laughs> no. I could do with a little pas I'll passivity. I'll try. I'll try yeah. and work some of that in. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Are you excited when you come into work and you're going to do this or are you just sort of neutral or are you actively depressed? <laughs> Full disclosure. Mm -hmm. In the early days, I yeah. was nervous. Oh, you were nervous? Of course I was. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm... Sonam of Sessian? Nice. I see what you're doing. No. The old, doing the old switcheroo. I'd no. be nervous too. Will she be cogent? <laughs> She's not here. We if can you talk have, about If her. you have rum and gummies for breakfast. <laughs> rummies? <what if> you, <laughs> rum, they're called rummies, yeah. Uh, no, well, it's funny because I, I, I'm always in a real good mood when we come in to do this. Me too. I'm, I'm happy to do it. It doesn't feel like work. And when people tell me they enjoy the podcast, I'm, I'm always kind of delighted because I think, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's nice that you like it because it's really fun to do. It's gravy. It's really, it's gravy. Yeah. It is gravy. Because at first I didn't really know how to, uh, you, you and Sona had a rapport. Mm -hmm. I was a little afraid because I didn't know how to kind of trade in, in that yeah, way. Yeah, because you were an interloper. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. We, ha we were sort of established yeah. and really uh, riffed well with each other, and it was organic. Um, and you, you know, were forced into the situation uh, in a way that was just wrong. Yeah. And you know I think I mean? once I found my voice on how to really stick it to the man, yes, that's when I really started to feel like there's a, a three way energy going on that I, now I really enjoy coming here. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, I was, you know, saying earlier that, uh, you know, joking that you were forced upon us. You were not. We're delighted to have you because you're an extraordinary voice in the podcast community, which I didn't even know. Well, I don't but know every that. time we have people come on the show, they're like, well, I know Gorley from, and then they start listing all these, you know, mm. Fez Weekly and the, mm. you know, the Magoo Report mm. and uh, the Jub Jub Hour with Winky and Doo Doo. They start listing all these podcasts. Mm -hmm. Simon McGee takes it at home. Uh, no. You know, an incredible list of shows that I didn't even know about. The Cuckoo Hour. Mm. With girls, girls, okay. and goo goo. Just, just for the record, the Fez one is bi weekly. Okay, okay. bi weekly. Yeah. All right. But anyway, you're very well known in that world, a subterranean strange world. Yeah, uh, and if that. Oh, please. Uh, and, please. And, and I'm not. I'm you only, are. No. You are. People know you and they go like, oh my God, it's Gorley. And I go like, okay, you know, really? And then they start listing again all the podcasts that, uh, that, that you are a part of. You know, I got a mining hat, come with me, um, with Matt Gorley. Uh, Gorley's Wall of Shame. Uh, These are sounding better as you keep, keep Hamana Hamana and Doo Doo with Gorley and the Gub Gub <laughs> Report. Some of my daughter's nicknames. Uh, yeah. But anyway, and then they go on and on and on about all the wonderful shows that they've heard you do and... I didn't realize how many you've done and how your different animal voices. And what? There's one where you talk about, you know, all kinds of stuff that happened in Roman history. Oh, you wish. I do wish, actually. <laughs> I'd listen to that. I like a good history podcast. But anyway, it's it's very nice. And I then made it my works bones out. in podcasting. What can I say? I made my bones it's in podcasting. the saddest sentence ever uttered. I made my bones in podcasting. <laughs> I got in in 2011. <laughs> oh, 2005, Fred. I cut my teeth so when funny. you were knee high. I cut this, my teeth in podcasting when you were barely shaving height. This reminds me of housing in Los Angeles because I grew up uh, in the Boston area and houses are old yeah. there. And so, you know, the house I grew up in was built in 1900 and that's just standard, wow. you know, it's, that's, that's pretty standard for that area of, you know, right outside Boston. But, uh, and then there are houses from the 1800s, there are houses from the, you know, 1700s around Boston, yeah. some from the 1600s. Full of witches. Yeah, seriously. Um, populating the whole area. So I live in Los Angeles and you buy a house here. And I remember we had some problem with our house. There was like a leak, a pipe was broken or something from a root. And a guy came and he was looking, he dug down and he was looking at it and he shook his head. And I said, what's the problem? And he went, well, you know, the, the pipe broke uh, that goes into the house. And, you know, so that's, that's got to be, we got to get in there and put a new piece of pipe because see this tree root broke it. And I went, huh? And he said, do you see this much? And he went, well... We see it from houses like this from the mid 2005, 2006s. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And he was kind of acting like, you know, when you get a house, 
that was made before Obama's first term. <laughs> you run into problems like this. Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, there's... they act like, well, you got one of these. You, <laughs> you got one of these houses from from the third season of Gossip Girl. <laughs> you got a 2006. Wow, we don't see many of these anymore. Because what happens here is people. People out here buy a house that was built in 2011 and tear it down uh, yeah. and build a new house because they're like, oh, my God, you should have seen it when we got it. Don't get it me built started. In... It's a shame. It's it is shame. too. It is too bad. I know yeah. you live in uh, a magical home, a gingerbread home. No. You do. It looks like a gingerbread home. It's lovely. It's, no. it's lovely. And parts of it are made of gingerbread, I know. No. Par yeah. No. Marzipan. Well, good, good improv skills again. No. Graham cracker. No. Well, I, That's your improv? No. No. This is not improv. No. This is you berating me. No. And I, I'm forced to defend myself. Hey, it's the improv team of Conan and Gorley. <laughs> and let's get started. Conan takes the stage. Hey, everybody. And, uh, oh, here's my friend here. We, no, I we're sure not love friends. working in this comedy factory. Uh, Don't you love, I mean, I sure love working in this candy factory. No. <laughs> Gorley, are you, you okay? Wish, you wish you no. knew. Like, well, all that stuff I was saying about excited to come in here, it's gone. Gorley, we sure have a difficult boss here. Isn't he funny? Isn't it weird that we have a difficult boss who's half dragon, half ape? No. Am I also 80? No. Well, that's how you say no. You, did you hear yourself saying no? Uh, I need no. Sona here. This is this is why we need Sona. To... Couldn't be here because Sona's on a book tour. Yeah. Because that's what happens when you hire an assistant that refuses to do her job. She writes a book about it. <laughs> it's a big hit, and she goes on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to America. Oh man, this is fantastic. I can't believe I got to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I'm. I'm sorry. You are a great improviser. I'm sure you are. No one no. puts out an old man no, no like you do. No. 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 No comedy. No None. jokes. No jokes. I want to go home. All right. Here I am with my comedy partner, Matt Gorley. No. Give us a suggestion. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your dad came to see the podcast. <laughs> That's his suggestion. No. I learned it all from him. No.